Hello there everyone, this is Brother Birch. In this video, I'm going to be going through the Lesson 8 class activity, uh, which is incorporating Auth0 into a node project. Now, Auth0 is an alternative to setting up your own uh, username and password system where you hash passwords and store that information in your database. Uh, it allows you to uh, basically use a third-party provider like Auth0 um, to use OAuth. and um, and they, they'll store passwords, they'll worry about um, the login and logout, all that stuff, storing information um, and tracking that state. And so today, <clears throat> uh, in our previous lesson, we learned about JWTs. Today, we're, we are gonna look a little bit at JWTs, but we're going to incorporate this um, in what a lot of people think is a much more simple way. Uh, and it's just different. Um, this won't fit for every situation. Uh, sometimes there's a little more overhead involved, sometimes there's a little less. With that said, um, Auth0 is a great option. If I just Googled uh, Node.js uh, REST OAuth, um, you'll see that there are a lot of, um, a lot of different options that you could use. Um, and with a lot of other frameworks as well, there, there are even more options, okay? Uh, so with that said, let's go ahead and dive into this one. Um, I'm excited to, to get into this. I haven't used this one before but it looks really awesome. So let's go ahead and do this. Uh, I'm at uh, just auth0.com. I'm just gonna go to their documentation. And there's this nice big button for backend API. Now, depending on what we wanna do, there are other options, right? So if I was just building a single page application uh, with React, for example, they have support for that. Okay, so this is really nice. Uh, but we're gonna, we're gonna do a backend API in Node. So I'm gonna go through here. Um, let's see here. This tutorial demonstrates how to add authorization to an Express.js API. We've been using Express. We recommend that you log in to follow this quick start with examples configured for your account. So, um, let's see here. I'm just gonna click on this login and download sample. Um, I haven't logged in yet, or I haven't created an account yet, so I'm gonna go ahead and see if it'll just create one, even though I hit logged in or log in. Mm, this is for me. I don't need advanced settings. All right, well, that was painless getting into here. Uh, it looks like I'm on a trial period for 22 days. I'm not sure what all is included in that. I don't even think I needed to, to, to use this though. Um, anyways, that's okay. So uh, what I'm gonna do, I'm also gonna just click on this link and see what's here. Uh, the sample demonstrates authentication for an Express Node app. The sample quickly shows how to log in, log out, and view profile information of the logged in user. So let's go ahead and, and go through this. So um, let's see here. Looking at this, I'm not the biggest fan of just because we have this view section in here and we're not gonna be rendering any EJS. So I think I'm just gonna stay away from that sample. Um, <clears throat> and we're just gonna come back here and just kind of walk through uh, some of these steps. So we need to set up a callback URL. It's a application route where Auth0 redirects users after they have been authenticated. And so what I think I'm gonna do first is I'm just gonna start um, a new node project. So I just created this new folder called 08 class activity. And in here, let me just open up a terminal. I'm just gonna run npm init hyphen y to create our package.json and our node project. I'm gonna say npm i dash dash save. We're gonna use express, uh, express open id connect and dot env. So those should all get put in my package JSON. Um, .env we're gonna use for our environment variables, which we're going to need. Um, let's see here. Let's go ahead and create uh, a project. So in here, I'm just gonna click on applications, maybe APIs. Let's see here. Zero, define APIs that you can consume from your authorized applications. 
I think we'll be okay not doing that. I think we'll be okay just using an application. Let's give it a shot. So I'm going to say create application, and I'm going to say uh, CSC 341.08. And let's see here. Node Express, regular web applications, traditional web app using redirects. Let's use that one. Okay, uh, what technology are you using for your project? Let's just find Node and choose your path. I want to explore a sample app, which we kind of already saw. I wonder if they'll show us a different one. And it's the web app sample. Oh, it's a different one. Starter seed. Nope, no, nope, it's the same one. All right. Um, so we'll ignore that. Uh, follow a step by step guide that configures Auth0 and provides code snippets to integrate into your existing app. That sounds perfect. We don't have much of an app up right now, um, but we'll get one. So, uh, a URL in your application. So, this is fine leaving this as localhost uh, just because right now we're on localhost. When we deploy it to Heroku, it'll look something like HTTPS, um, your app name dot Heroku app dot com um, slash callback, right? Um, and then same thing with this guy. It would just be, um, you know, exactly that just without callback. Okay, we're gonna ignore that for now just because we're just we're just gonna do this class activity locally. But changing that, it would just be swapping out this URL um, for our regular one, kind of like we do with our Swagger documentation when we use that. So. Um, that looks good. That looks good. I'm going to hit save settings and continue. Um, so install dependencies. We did that. We did this. We also did .env, which is good because we don't want this stuff just stored uh, anywhere. Um, let's see. You'll need to configure the router with the following configuration keys. Okay, so we'll need a base URL, secret issuer base URL, and client ID. So I'm actually just going to copy this whole thing. No, there's a copy button. That's okay. I'm going to copy this whole thing and I'm going to make a new file called server.js. I'm going to make sure my package JSON is listening or is waiting to see server.js and not index.js. Um, and I'm going to paste everything that I just copied. Uh, I am then going to put in these values into our .env file. Okay, so in my env file, I'm just going to come over here and I'm going to put issuer base URL equals and then I'm just going to put to get this we need to head back over to uh, our browser to our our project settings so I'm actually going to open I'm going to duplicate I want both of these tabs open so I need to open up our settings here for our application I'm going to click on settings and we have this domain and this is the domain that it gave me when I created that. So I'm going to copy this and I'm going to head back over to VS Code and I'll put that for the issuer base URL. Okay. And then we'll need our client ID. Uh, and this right here uh, is going to be the client ID. Next up, we're going to have the base URL. And this is just going to be our local host currently. Uh, when we change this, or actually, we'll leave this as local host, but when we set up our config vars on Heroku, this will be our Heroku app URL, not local host. Okay? But for our local environment file, it'll just stay as this. Okay? And then we'll have our secret. And the only rule with this secret is it can be any string, at least 32 characters or more. Okay? So I'm going to say, I'm just going to put in a nice big random string and save that okay so we have our values there and now let's head back to our browser and see what's next um oh let's go ahead and put those environment variables into here into our config so i'm going to come back over to vs code and in my server file i'm just going to split that right just so it's easy for me to see um, make that nice and small i just want to see those keys so i don't mess anything up Okay, right up here, we already have .env uh, included, and so I'm just going to say require whoops, .env .config, and that we missed a parenthesis there. There we go. 
Okay, so we'll require that. And then inside of this config for the issuer base URL, we're gonna take that out. And I'm just gonna say process env dot issuer base URL. Okay, uh, for the base URL or for the client ID, I'm just gonna say process dot env dot whoa nope didn't want you to do that dot client ID for the base URL it's process dot env dot base URL and then we have our secret say process dot env dot secret. Yeah, it keeps on doing that. Okay, so that should work for our config there. We have the auth required is false, auth zero logout, that all looks good. Okay, let's head back over here. Here's an example already configured with your information. Oh, that was our information, that's cool. Okay, <clears throat> let's keep going. Next, test your login. So let's head over here, test your login. Uh, for login in your application, visit the login route provided by the library. Well, let's uh, see if this works. It'll be like magic if it does. So um, I'm just going to say npm start. Got a nice big error here. Let's see what it is. Uh, app is not defined. Details. Okay, let's go ahead and declare our app. So I'll say const app equals express. And we have our auth being there, and we have that included, app.use, auth config. Okay, this probably includes, yep, attaches login, logout, callback routes to the base URL. Okay, well, let's try that again. Failed again, let's see why. Express is not defined. Wow. That's crazy. I thought we installed it. Third time's a check. Oh, never mind. Express is not defined. Interesting. Let's go ahead and make sure we're including it. Again, details. Uh, require Express. Okay, and let's run it. Uh, base URL is required. So we have a base URL right there. Where's this error coming from? Oh, I didn't catch one of these. Oh my heavens, there's two of them. Come on, VS Code. I don't even know where that event name string is coming from. That's ridiculous. All right, let's try this again. Didn't autocorrect that stuff. Issuer base URL. So this guy must be a valid URL. <clears throat> Come back over here. We'll look here, it's saying that this guy is invalid. So let's head back over to our browser and I'll look at settings. So there's the domain, which is right. Probably just need to make sure HTTP is in there. So the domain looks good. We just need to make sure it has HTTPS there. So let's put it there, HTTPS, and then our domain. Let's try it. Um, okay, that all looks good. We forgot to listen for stuff, so again, I just post pasted in all this stuff, not really thinking what was going on. So we have our Express app ready to go. We have their config using their auth. We have their auth routes. And we have just a home page that looks like it'll show just logged in or logged out. Now let's go ahead and just listen um, so we can actually run our application. So I'm going to go ahead and just declare a port. I'll go ahead and declare that right up here at the top. I'll say const port <coughs> equals process dot env dot Oh, that is seriously driving me crazy. Uh, Process.env.port or 3000. Okay. And then let's go ahead and listen for it. So I'll just say app.listen port of our anonymous function here. And we'll just say const.log um, listening on port. Okay, well, let's do this. All right, that looks good, listing on port 3000. And let's head to our browser and see what it looks like if we go to 3000. 
logged out. Hey, that looks awesome. Okay, if I hit the log in route, let's see what it does. Look at that. Log into dev group 6 <laughs> to continue to CSC through Twitter 108. This is great. So I'm just going to hit continue with Google. Sounds nice and simple. Okay, yep, I'll hit accept on that. It says I'm logged in. That's sweet. And if I say log out, it says logged out. That's awesome. Okay, now that we have that, let's go ahead and test this a little bit more. I'm gonna close this. We're good to go there. <clears throat> I wanna just add one more route here to our program. Uh, that's just gonna basically check um, to see if someone's logged in or not. So I'm just gonna say um, app.get and let's say we have a profile route that a user can see if they're logged in. And so I only want this to show if they're logged in, so I'm gonna say requires auth, uh, coming from our OpenID uh, connect package there, rec and res. And so this middleware here will basically check to make sure if they're logged in. If they're not, then it'll handle it, and if they are, then it will allow us to get to this route. And all I wanna do is just say um, res.send, we'll say json.stringify, and we'll just send like the rec um, open ID connect uh, user that's signed in here. Okay, so I'm gonna save that and let's test out this middleware. Um, I'm gonna close this nodemon server.js requires auth is not defined. Let's make sure I import it. Nope, I did not import it. Let's go ahead and import it. I'm just gonna say requires auth from there. Run it listening on 3000. That looks good. Come over here. All right, so we're logged out. If I try to go to log in, let's see what happens. I'll say continue with Google. Logged in. That looks great. And if I try to hit our profile route, oh, let's see. Path must be absolute or specify root to res.send file. Wow, I don't even know where this send file came from. VS Code's being all wonky this morning. Jeez, okay, yeah, just res.send, there we go. All right, come over here, I'm gonna hit refresh. Hey, look at that, that looks awesome. It even gave me a picture, that's fantastic. This is actually really cool because then I can just like use, I can use all this information in my application. Okay, so one nice thing about using OAuth in general is you can use stuff that other people are storing for you. So like I just signed in with Google, and so it says, oh yeah, you know, here's his name. I didn't put any of this in. None of it's in my database. Uh, here's my full name, my picture, uh, my email address. And all this is just available um, to you as a developer, you know, to say, oh yeah, when someone's logged in, I'm gonna show their thumbnail in the top right hand corner, kind of like how Chrome is showing this right here and, and whatever else you wanna do. Or you can say, oh yeah, welcome Nathan or, or whatever, you know. Um, so let's hit log out. Okay, we're logged out and let's hit profile and see what it does. Yeah, so it just, it just rerouted me to this login page, um, which is awesome, okay? So what I love about this is it's just handling all these routes for me. It has all this just built for me, um, even with quite a few bugs on my part and on VS Code's part, um, it's only taken us a few minutes to set this up, uh, which is just fantastic. So. Um, anyways, I hope that this has been helpful for you. I know that I don't have Mongo set up. I don't have any of like our routes folders and things set up here. Um, I just wanted to show you a nice simple example of everything that's needed um, to be able to use this package. And in actuality, it's really not that much. It's really, really awesome. We have like less than 30 lines of code here. Um, so it's really nice. And, and if you wanted to put this into an application, that's awesome. You can just like throw in an entire routes directory here that says, oh yeah, you know, everything in the store route or everything in the user route, these all require auth. Um, and if a user's not logged in, it'll just reroute it, make sure they're logged in. Um, and so it's just, it's awesome. So anyways, I hope that this has been helpful for you. I hope that you enjoyed it. Um, there are ways, let me just go back here and just show you guys one last thing. Um, get your application keys, we did that. Install dependencies, we did that. 
we did all of this display user profile log out man where was I seeing it um, there's a way so this is just like their quick start here um, but you can also set it up so that you have like um, specific JWTs that you use so even though I mean this is handling it um, for us but like if I hit refresh here you'll notice that I stay logged in and if I look at my developer tools uh, and I just go to application um, you can see that there's like my session variable that's being stored here and it looks um, oh here's our token okay there's our JWT and <clears throat> and I don't know if this will work if I actually close this window I'm actually curious to see if it'll keep us yeah we're still logged in um, which is really nice and it's because of of those tokens that are being stored so it, it is using tokens and it and it has all that just like built in um, so anyways with that said I hope that this has been helpful for you I hope that you enjoyed it uh, I hope that you guys see the potential in this um, I I tell my students frequently that uh, once I started using OAuth and things like this um, I was like I'm never gonna build just a from scratch login system again where I like get a password and hash it and build all the middleware out myself um, I can, you know, Node makes it easier than a lot of languages, uh, but there are so many services that can do it for you. And this one says that I'm on uh, like this 22 days left. I'm curious to see. Um, yeah, so I, my free subscription up to 7,000 users, 1,000 tokens. And so as long as I stay within 1,000 users, um, you know, because they all might have active tokens at some point, then I'm totally fine. Um, and once you have more than that, then you can start just monetizing your app so that you can, you can pay for something like this if you're using it. Um, the other nice thing about having something like this set up is that you're not liable. You know, you're not storing any sensitive user information. Um, companies like Google are, um, and so, and, and you don't have to worry about it, you know? So that's, that's one nice thing too. Anyways, uh, I hope that this was helpful for you and, uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks.